Hello, and welcome to Programming for the Absolute Beginner. Part 1. The Basic Makeup of a Computer System What is a computer system? A computer system is an interconnected set of components working together towards a common goal. The system consists of two main categories, hardware and software. Software is a set of instructions that directs the hardware. Software can often be classified as operating system, which allows the user to operate the system in an efficient manner to access the data. System support, which provides system utilities and other operating services, such as disk formatting and printing. System development, which includes a language translator that converts programs into machine language for execution and debugging. Application software that is written to perform specific tasks for individual users, like word processor, database management systems, POS systems, accounting systems, and so forth. Hardware is the actual pieces of equipment, like the keyboard, the CPU, which stands for the central processing unit, printers, and monitors even external speakers, as many things you can think of that can be connected to your computer. But what is a program? A program is a set of instructions following the rules of a chosen language. The more natural the instructions are, the more sophisticated the computer language. In a perfect world, we would just speak to our computers and direct them to carry out any task we desire. The native tongue of a computer is machine language. Each machine language instruction is a binary string of zeros and ones that specifies an operation and identifies the memory cells involved in that operation. For example, if we wanted to represent the algebraic formula total equals price plus tax, in a machine program we might need to see the sequence of instructions as displayed below. In each machine language instruction, the operation to be performed and the address of the data to be manipulated are written as binary numbers. Although these instructions are unintelligible to most people, the computer would have no difficulty understanding them. In order to make it easier for us to write computer programs, high-level languages have been developed. High-level languages allow us to write computer code using instructions reassembling everyday spoken language. For example, the printf statement, the if statement, the while statement, which are then translated into machine language to be executed. Programs written in a high-level language need to be translated into machine language before they can be executed. Some programming languages use a compiler to perform this translation and others use an interpreter. Let's take a look at the difference between a compiler and an interpreter. The original program written using a high-level language is called the source program, or the source code. A compiler translates the entire source program into machine language before executing any lines of code. Once the program has been translated successfully, it must be free of syntax errors. An executable program is created and saved. The executable program can then be run repeatedly without needing to be translated again. So once the source program has been translated into an executable program using a compiler, it can run quite quickly. C is an example of a language which uses a compiler to translate program code into machine language. Let's find out what an interpreter is. An interpreter, on the other hand, translates one line of the source program and then executes that line. The process continues until the whole program has been translated and executed one line at a time. When the interpreter is used, there is no executable program at the end. Programs translated using the interpreter have to be translated every time they are run. Therefore, programs run a lot slower. Perl, VBScript, and Smalltalk are examples of languages which use an interpreter to translate program code into machine language. Regardless of the language you choose, thoroughly understanding the problem should always be the first step in writing a computer program. Here are some factors to consider. Imagine that you have a problem. 
opportunity or business that you want to act upon. For example, a customer wants an estimate on building a fence around a swimming pool. What are some of the variables that would influence the cost of building this fence? For example, the dimensions of the fence would be a factor in the cost because the greater the dimension, the more materials the builder would have to use. A seven-step model is shown on the next screen to guide you through the complete program development cycle from A to Z. Step one, understand the problem and any formulas math related. Step two, plan the logic of the program on paper without reference to a specific language. Step three, design the source program following the rules of the chosen language. Step four, type in and save the source program using a text editor like Notepad, Xcode, NLED, Pico, VI, there are a lot of other text editors as well. Step five, walk through the program's logic and syntax. Correct errors in the source program and resave the program. Manually check the program instructions and the sequence. Step six, compile the source program to create an executable program. For example, we will be using the CC compiler in our tutorials. Step seven, run the executable several times with both expected and unexpected inputs to thoroughly test the program logic. Your program must be able to handle unusual circumstances as much as possible. If logic errors occur during test runs, return to step five. Now let's look a little more closely at the general form of a C program. Every C program must follow the general form below. Program statements are placed between the curly brace brackets, and lowercase letters must be used for all C statements. The program shown above doesn't actually do anything, so let's take a look at a program that prints a line of text to the screen. When the program shown below is compiled and executed, the message, this is my first program, will be printed on the screen. In general, every program statement must end with a semicolon. Many programmers follow the convention of indenting all statements inside the curly brackets. The slash n at the end of the character string is a special character that tells C to advance the cursor in the output window to the beginning of the next line. Here are some other special characters for the printf statement shown below in table 1.1. Please take a glance at them and write them down as you please. It's pretty fun to test out the slash a character because it does make a fun little noise. But officially, to use the printf statement, the library file needs to be added to your program. Some compilers will automatically include the necessary files, while other compilers may display an error message. To ensure your program is portable, it is better to write the program as shown below. Notice the pound include stdio.h. That's your standard input and output library. These are basically files that your program will need to execute properly, but they're kind of hidden underneath the hood, so you don't really need to worry about what they do. You just need to include them in your file. Include is a preprocessor directive. In this case, it tells C to include the stdio.h header file with your code. Note that this line does not end with a semicolon. We will be getting to writing some code in the next tutorial. So for now, please take a look at what you see, which is walk through 1.1, and on a separate piece of paper, try to write out the output and see what it could potentially be like. And we'll get back to that in our next tutorial. Thanks guys, you did a great job.